In this video, I will demonstrate how to simulate tossing multiple dice and how to find the sums of those dice and investigate the distribution of the sum of dice. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is label my columns. And I'm going to, um, for this demonstration, I'm going to use five die or five dice. Okay, so I've got die one, die two, and of course Excel picks up on patterns very easily. So I'm going to click and hold on my fill handle and I'm going to drag across until I have the labels for my five dice. While I'm here, I'll go ahead and add uh, my last label, which is going to be the sum because we want to find the sum of the five dice. Okay, now I'm going to generate my first value. Okay, we're going to use the ram between function to generate numbers between 1 and 6 like we would see on a standard die. So I'll start with an equal sign. The function I'm going to use again is rand between. I'll use my left parentheses and I can see the syntax is I put in the lowest number followed by a comma and then I put in the upper number. So my lower number is 1, my upper number is 6. Okay, and so we get a four. All right, so I can just drag that across again by clicking on the cell where I generated my first number. I'm going to click, hold, and drag on the fill handle. That's this little square in the lower right-hand corner. And so now I've got numbers for my five die. Okay, I also want to find the sum so I'm going to click in the cell beneath the uh, label heading sum and I'll start that with equals. We'll use the sum function and uh, we'll use the left parentheses and then we'll highlight the values that we want to include in the sum. So I clicked, I held uh, down my left mouse key and I swept across the values that I want to include. Now I'm releasing. Okay, and then I'll close that up with the right parentheses and enter. Okay, so it's generated those sums for us. All right. Now you might have noticed when I did that, all of the values uh, for my dies changed. That's because um, the spreadsheet right now is set to do manual calculations, and um, I'm sorry, automatic calculations. So as we do this random uh, function, it, you know, when we hit enter. Uh, it will regenerate the numbers. We don't want that to happen. We want to kind of stabilize our data. So I'm going to turn off the manual calculation or rather the automatic calculation option. So click on your formulas tab and then you'll see calculation options. We're going to click on that and right now automatic is checked. We want to change that to manual. Okay. Now all of our data is pretty much going to look the same until we use this calculate now um, button or you can use the F9 key on your keyboard. Okay, So the next thing I need to do is make sure I have 1500 sets of data. Right now we only have one. So I'm going to just drag this pattern all the way down to 1501 because remember we did use the first row for our label. So I'm highlighting what I want to copy and drag. I'm going to use this fill handle, which is in the lower right hand corner. I'm clicking on the fill handle. I'm holding and I'm going to drag until I get to row 1501. It takes a second to get there, but it's a lot faster than having to uh, actually generate all of this data uh, manually. Okay. All right, so I've got all my data, except it's all the same. So I'll just click on Calculate Now so that I can see um, the actual values that we're going to look at. OK, so I've got all my tosses. I've got all my sums. I need to figure out how many of each sum I have. So uh, and we're going to start prepare frequency distribution. So I'm going to add a couple of labels. I'm going to have my sum which is going to be my random variable x. x represents the sum of the five dies that I tossed. Then we're going to look at the frequency 
And then, of course, we're going to want to know the probability of each of these values. All right, so if I'm tossing five dice, then the minimum value would be five, right? Because I could get all ones, and then I'd have a minimum value of five. And if I wanted to um, toss, or my highest value would be 30. If I got all sixes, then the highest value for the sum could be 30. So I need to list all my sums from 5 to 30. And I'm just using the pattern again. I did the 5 and the 6. I copied, highlighted, and I dragged until I got down into uh, the last sum of 30. Okay. Now we need to count all of these values and figure out how many sums of 5, how many sums of 6. And I'm going to use count if to do that. So we start with equals, count if. I'm going to use my left parenthesis. You can see it asks me, where do you want me to look for this count? That's what it means by range. So I'm going to highlight my 1,500 sums. So when I go back up here, I can see that it's put those cell references there, F2 to F1501. I'm going to follow that with a comma. And then now it wants to know, well, what's the criteria? What am I looking for? And so our criteria is we want it to count any values that are equal to 5. So I'm going to click on just this 5. It puts the cell reference there, H2, and I'll close that with parenthesis and hit enter. Okay. All right. So it looks like there are only, there's zero values that have a sum of five, which is not surprising. I mean, we would have had to get all ones um, on our toss in order for us to have a sum of five. And it looks like that never happened. Now I'm going to, of course, oh, before we drag this down, I need to adjust uh, my cell reference for where it's looking. Notice again that right now it's looking at the range from F2 to F1501. If I drag this down to the next row, then now it's looking at F3 to F1502. I don't want that part to move. I do want it to move from H2 to H3 h4 etc but i don't want this part to move so we're going to use um, the string sign or the dollar sign to anchor these numbers okay so to get back in here i just did a double click on that cell i'm going to put a dollar sign in front of my two and a dollar sign in front of 1501 or the string symbol and then we hit enter okay then um, now when I drag this down, okay, it's still F2 to F1501, which is what we want. So I can drag that all the way down until I get to my sum of 30, okay? They all show up as zero, but I can just click calculate now for it to regenerate the values on the spreadsheet. So now I've got all of my uh, frequencies for the various sums. Okay, so the last thing, oh, the next thing I need to do is calculate my probabilities. And so the probability is going to be equal to the frequency divided by 1500. Okay, and then I'm going to just drag that down. And we get each frequency divided by 1500. I'll click calculate now. And we can kind of check these out. I want to check both of these out, actually, at the bottom. I'm going to do equal sum. This is where I had all of my uh, frequencies that should come up to 1,500. I'm going to highlight. Close parenthesis, hit enter. We do have 1,500 values. And then um, right here, I've got my sum of 1. Actually, let's see. I want to say equal sum. Okay. 
And so all of my probabilities add up to one. So everything's been accounted for. Okay, now the last thing we need to do is prepare our um, histogram. And my histogram is going to show the probability of each value. And on my x-axis, I want to have these sums. So I'm going to highlight all of my probabilities, including the label. And I'm going to go to Insert. I'm going to choose a column chart. I'll click on Column. OK, I already kind of see it looks pretty good. Uh, this one is a 1. That's that the sum that really shouldn't be in there. So we can either delete this. That might be the easiest thing. I'll just delete it. And um, this time when I highlight, I'm, I'm not going to include the 1 at the bottom. OK, so everything except our total of 1. I'll go to Insert, Column choose my chart and there we are okay now I need my sums on the bottom so I'm going to do a right click on my chart and I'm going to choose select data and then over for the horizontal axis I'll click edit and then I'm going to actually highlight the values the sums from 5 to 30 okay and then click OK. And so now I've got sums from 5 to 30. OK. Um, now those numbers are kind of bunched up. So there are a couple of things we could do to work on that. I've clicked on the numbers. I'm going to do a right click and choose font. And um, I'm going to make the size a little bit smaller. See, that may help us a little bit. Um, yes, that looks a lot better. Okay, now we need to clean this up. Of course, since this is a histogram, we shouldn't have gaps between our bars. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to format data series. And right here, uh, it talks about the gap width. I don't want any gaps between my bars. Okay, so I've pushed that all the way down to zero. Okay, and that, that looks like that. All right. Uh, we might choose a different layout. I need a place to tell it what these different axes uh, represent. So I like, and of course, a place for a title. So I've clicked on that one. That looks better. Okay, also, you can play with some of the other details. I think if we do that, everything's going to stand out a little bit more. All right, so on my axis title, I'm going to have sum of five dice. I just want to click there and actually change that. Over here, we can say relative frequency okay. and give it an appropriate title distribution of the sums of five dice okay and that's our um, our, our histogram okay so the last thing you need to do is write a brief summary of your findings, noting the possible range of values. So if you did five dice, you'd have a range of values from five to 30. Um, talk about the shape of the distribution. Okay, what do we notice about the shape? Okay, and um, that's it. Okay, so you'll save this with your last name, Ditos, and your last name, and then submit it to the Dropbox by the due date.